And I'll tell you guys since we're since we're all friends. Every character I write has a piece of me in them. Hi, I'm Lee Bardugo, and you're listening to the Grisha Cast. Welcome to Grisha Cast, episode 57. In this episode, we are covering chapters 7 through 9 from the book King of Scars. This is your host, Eric. And I'm Terry. From Nashville, Tennessee, this is your podcast for all things Grishaverse. A world created by the wonderful Lee Bardugo. Moi Savienyi casters! Hello, hello! Woohoo! We are here and we're happy. We are. <laughs> <laughs> so, we got some listener cities. We do. First of all, we have. Koda Kinabalu from Malaysia. Wow. And next is Huna, India. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. That is so far away. We love it. We love that you guys enjoy us. And we just can't believe that you guys are listening from all the way in India. I know. It's it's so cool. Yeah. So, real quick, for those of you asking how you can help, we would greatly appreciate tips. A dollar goes a long way. Your tips will help us to continue to bring you the Grisha cast. You can Venmo a tip to at B-O-D-H-I-M-M. Or cash app, dollar sign, mm-hmm. B-O-D-H-I-M-M. Also, leaving a review on your podcast platform, liking and following us on our socials, especially on YouTube. Yeah. That would so make us very, very, very happy. But you know what makes me really happy is that we have a guest! Yes! Woo! <laughs> we have our friend, Carrie. Woo! Say hi, Carrie. Hi. <laughs> Yay. We are so happy. This is our first guest, and this is one of our friends that we go way back with. Way and, back. And it's just way far, back. farther than we should probably say. <laughs> yes. But it's so cool to know that she was like reading the Grisha verse two and is like, she's all the way up to where we are right now. And yeah, she's a Grisha verse fan. So we had to bring her on. Perfect first guest. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So. One thing that we always, I always wanted to do was, um, you know, the Grisha verse names that I liked. I always wanted to have our guest kind of like come up with one or something and kind of have that, you know, not do it every single episode. But when I, we have our guests ask them what their Grisha verse name would be. So if you remember, mine was E R Y K. So I liked that. And Terry, what was yours? Um, T A E R I E. Yes. Yes. And next time, you know what? We'll have that on the screen so you can see it when we have a guest. But Carrie, I know I asked you that a long time ago. Have you ever have you thought back about that at all? Well, I did a little bit. And it turns out that I kind of picked the same as (laughs) Terry. Hey. But starting off with a K. (laughs) Hey, it works. It does. Our names rhyme anyway, so hey. (laughs) No. Hey. What are you gonna do? Exactly. It's kind of, it, it's hard. When you look at all this, like, different names throughout the Grishaverse, they are, they've just got this, like, special, like, way of spelling, and I, I love it. So, next question. We have to ask you about what kind of Grisha order you would be in and suborder. So, I have to look at the spelling because I don't, I'm not very good at foreign languages. Ooh. <laughs> so, right. some of these words get tricky for me, but the... Corporalki? Yes. Mm-hmm. And I'd be a healer. Aw. That's very fitting. Well, that's good. I wouldn't need you around because I'd probably be like... <laughs> I yeah. Would... I, like, I like being needed. Hey. It, it feels good. That'd be per... So... I can see that. And between the three of us, we'd be covered now. Exactly. <laughs> we yeah. could, like, take on some things. We, we really could. could. <laughs> Bring it. I'm not sure what, but... All the things. Good. It'd be good. <laughs> exactly. Well, um, so what have you thought so far of King of Scars? Because I know you've read all the way up to here, but I mean, just this book where we are right now. Have you be- found it entertaining? Do you li- are you liking it? I am enjoying it. I, I think the biggest thing for me is there's a lot of information. Yeah. And I'll be reading, and then all of a sudden I'm like, wait, what? And so <laughs> I have to go back. So I've been listening to it, to the Audible Mm-hmm. One. Yeah, um, and I had to listen to the last three chapters two or three times. There was a lot in those <laughs> so chapters, so don't much. worry about it. So, yeah. so much. <laughs> yeah, that the last chapter, like I mean, that we cover this evening, like nine, it just had bukus oh, of information yes, in it. it. 
Yeah, so you are not alone in that boat, girl. And I think, like, looking back, that's how her books work, is, like, a, all the information is kind of up front. Like, you, you get into it, and then once the action picks up, then it flows and rolls. But, like, there's, in the beginning, it's like, uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> let like, me make notes. <laughs> just jumping right in, and you're like, whoa, wait a second. <laughs> There's a lot, and especially with this book, because now she's combining, mm -hmm. you know, all the world. Like, I mean, we've read about the Grishaverse, but I mean, you know, the whole Shadow and Bone series, plus the Six of Crows characters, and it's like a lot. So I'm really excited about the sequel coming out March 31st. Let's not forget. <laughs> and Which we're not actually picking up until like after we go through the show. So I'm going to have to read it. Yeah. I'm going to have to read it before we start on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to have to. It's, it can't just sit there. No. It doesn't seem fair to <laughs> wait, well, wait to oh. read it. See, and I'm still in the same situation that I always am in. Two of my friends that are right here have not read nope. everything that I've read, so I still <laughs> can't, like, talk to people nope, about not yet. some of the stuff that I really want to talk about. Not yet. One day. <laughs> we'll get there. We will. <laughs> Lord. Well, before we start, I think we also should give you a Feared and Mary kill. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, here's one. Feared and Mary kill Kaz, Nikolai, and Matthias. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Think okay. on that one. <laughs> hmm. Is that hard? Uh, <laughs> I've mean... already got it. That's a little, um, but I, th I think I think I'm gonna have to I'm I'm gonna have to marry Nikolai, oh, um, yeah. because mm -hmm. I think he's my favorite. I think I think he's really clever and smart, and you just never know what he's gonna say, what he's up to. <laughs> I, and I think that would be a lot of fun to. And he's rich, and you'd be a queen. I mean, true. That wouldn't hurt. Okay, I'm with um, you on that one. So okay. And then I think I'm going to have to fear it in Kaz. Yes. Oh, wow. Um, yes. I mean, I'm not sure I really need to explain no. why. No, you don't have to. <laughs> and then, you know, I feel bad for Matthias, but what are you going to do? He's we're already, already dead. We're already used to his death, so it doesn't, yeah. you know, it's I mean, not a shocker anymore. <laughs> we've, exactly. already, we've already mourned him. Yep. Yes. You know, the Those feels... were great answers. I'm right Thank there you. with you. Thank you. I that, agree. That was I... A good... I would have done the exact same thing. Whoa. You did perfect. We're all in agreement. Wow. Crazy. That is crazy. All right, cool. That one That one went over well. Yes. <laughs> well, I can't think of any others, but if I come up, come up, come up with anything, maybe I'll ask you at the end of the show. Okay. Show. Um, okay, well, should we get started? Let's do it. Okay. So, and by the way, Carrie, feel free to talk mm -hmm. and talk whenever you want we are here so okay um <laughs> yeah obviously so we're starting off with chapter seven which is my favorite zoya so i love her and as i always do starting off with a quote from the beginning of the book so zoya rose when the sky was still dark she would see to the morning's business before she made the walk to the grand palace to unlock nikolai a week had passed since they'd arrived back at the capital, and to her relief, the king's monster had made no more appearances. Tamar and Nadia were all already waiting in the common room outside her chambers, seated at the round table that had once belonged to the Darkling's personal guard. Nadia was still in her blue dressing gown, but Tamar was in uniform. Arms bare, axes glinting at her hips. End quote. So, Tamar and Nadia informed Zoya that... I mean, they, there's nothing like getting out of bed and just finding out exactly what's wrong with your country. Uh, they tell her how there were two more Kergood attacks, which I think I'm pronouncing that the correct way. I think so. Yeah, which were those crazy, crazy, um, like, I mean, I don't like soldiers that the metallic uh, ones. Yes, exactly. I, I, they're just, but they're Grisha and they're like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's two more of those attacks. They also let her know that one of the groups that had been caught was actually undercover. And what this means is that the shoe either knew they were coming or we find out that they act, Nina had given them information beforehand that she thought that these care good could actually smell or sniff out Grisha. Yeah, we already went through that. So... <laughs> 
that's kind of scary and really weird um, that these things can do that. But I think it's definitely possible. Well, yeah, we went through that in um, Crooked Kingdom. Yeah. Well, they're just, exactly. They're learning it. And I, I'm sure they're just, Zoya is very skeptical of Nina, I think, yes. anything about yes. her. <laughs> Unfortunately, they haven't been able to figure out where these care good ha- are being made. But after Zoya looks over the file and kind of taken in some information and studied a little bit, she's they've discovered that part of their making is this rare metal um, and it's being used to create their bones. So Zoya then commands for them to find the source and that way they will track the shipments and that's how they will find them and be able to, I don't know, kill them, blow it up, <laughs> make no more. <laughs> so Stop the production. Yeah. As if there's like this weird factory <laughs> line of like these care good just shooting out. <laughs> and you can just flip the switch. Yep. Just... And it See? makes like the horn noise like when you stop like the car production thing. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Does anybody else think of I Love Lucy when you think of like a factory? Yes. Oh, okay. the chocolates. Yes. Always. <laughs> to our young listeners, I'm sure you're not sure what I'm li- talking about, but don't worry. It's okay. Watch I you Love can, Lucy. You could probably find it on YouTube. Yes. Sure you could. I'm sure you can. <laughs> I Love Lucy, the chocolate factory. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, moving on. Zoya then goes um, to unlock Nikolai from his restraints and get him ready for the day. After he gets ready, Zoya is about to go over the matters that affect his day, and they get interrupted and told that something has happened with the pilgrims camped outside the walls because the apparat has ordered his priest guard to the lower town. So remember, like, there are all those pilgrims still sitting out there? Yeah, so something's going on. And the creepy apparat. Yes, he's still here. He is. very creepy in my head. Oh, he's so creepy. Yes. So Nikolai expected this, and so he's already, like, got these, like, spies out there in the the camp and guards already. Zoya reminds Nikolai that the apparat should have never been trusted and should have been put to trial for all his war crimes in the Civil War. And then Nikolai kindly reminds to her that his influence is pretty big among the people. So, I mean, unfortunately, the apparat just has a huge influence. When they, so they they have to go and figure out what's going on. So they start getting down there and get to the gate. And Zoya cannot believe what she sees. But all these pilgrims are wearing black and have banners with the sun in eclipse. Oh my goodness. Which, what is this bringing us all the way back to? Dun the dun da. Darkling. Yep, the Darkling. The cult, and this is the cult of the Starless Saint. So. It's kind of a fun name. It is. And these people are just like, so Zoya, of course, is like, what? Because, <laughs> I mean, the Darkling was really mean to her. Like, I mean, killed a lot of her friends, and like, it just. Her history with him is very dark, and he was just a very dark character. So the Aprat comes to Nikolai and explains that the there's a priest out there, and he's like on this rock talking, and his name is Yuri Vedenin, I think is how you pronounce it. Didn't even try that one, so I, I applaud tried. you. Vedenin. <laughs> so we'll just call him Yuri because that's what everybody else does. So Yuri, um. I guess was part of the priest guard, but left a year ago. And so to calm things down, Nikolai decides that he's going to go out out there and talk to Yuri, which of course everybody's like, what? No, you're the king. You can't go out there. What? Um, so, of course, it's Nikolai. So he's going to do it. So Yuri, I mean, so Nikolai goes out there. And what we find out is Yuri wants the Darkling to be recognized as a saint. Nikolai convinces Yuri to come inside with him and have some breakfast, and we can consider he can consider this request and, you know, try to butter him up. And Nikolai is interested in what Yuri is going to say. He somehow just reali- he thinks that Yuri is going to have some kind of information because we have to remember Nikolai has a lot going on right now, too. He's trying to figure out with the monster inside him what's going on with that. And so he's inquisitive and it's like, sure, let's bring him inside. Well, he finally convinces him and he does 
come inside with him. And then we flip to the next day. And we follow Zoya around as she gets ready for her daily chores. And we learn that Kue um, changed his name. And here's the <laughs> quote. He had chosen a new name when he'd come to the little palace. Nahab. Naban. <laughs> it meant rising phoenix in Shu. I don't know how to say that. Nope. It's, it's in my notes and I didn't even look over it. It's fine. N-H-A-B-A-N. Naban? Yeah, Nobbin. See, Nobbin. I didn't listen to the audio. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. Yeah, Nobbin. Well, it's the only time we're gonna even say this. It, I just threw it in there because I love like little facts about some of the like characters from other books. So, anyways, um, that was interesting. But what's more interesting is this next quote. After dinner, she'd managed another hour of work before she ventured to the Grand Palace to lock Nikolai in for the night and then allowed herself to retire to her chambers. They had once belonged to the Darkling. Jenya and David had refused them when they'd assumed their duties in the Triumvirate, but Zoya had gladly occupied the spacious rooms. She was happy to take anything that once had been his, and she had swung the first hammer when it was time to tear down the old furnishings and remake the space to her liking. A gesture. She wasn't about to let her hands get calloused and had left the real effort to the workmen. It had taken months, long months, and considerable fabricator craft to fashion the room to her taste, but now the dome ceiling showed a sky thick with cloud and the walls had been treated to look like a storm swept sea. Few people noticed the little boat that had been painted into one of the six corners or the flag it flew with two tiny stars, and no one who did would have known what it meant. End quote. So I pointed that out just because I wanted to point it out. It's important. Because foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. <laughs> I don't know. I know. But. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it if definitely Eric makes you out. think. <laughs> it makes it, yeah, exactly. And I do think it's kind of cool that Zoya, like her, she was like, yes, I'm going to take these rooms. Um, I think it's, Cool how she actually deals with her like with the pain you know of like what the darkling did she decides that she's gonna like take his room and destroy it and turn it into her own and i just think it's kind of healthy i think yeah For, yeah so moving on zoya goes to sleep and then is woken up by tamar who informs her that uh-oh nikolai's gone so she stumbles to put on her clothes as she's trying to run out the door. And Zoya is informed that Tolia heard the glass break and then opened up the king's chambers just in time to see him fly out the window. So it kind of reminds me, I know, like, I don't know why, but I think of the flying monkeys as well. <laughs> when, like, that scene comes up, I'm like, <laughs> I don't even think there's a scene in The Wizard of Oz where you see them. Well, no, there is. Yeah, when you I see can, him jump out that window. See, that's where I it came from. I can totally, now that you've said that. <laughs> I know. and he's That's perfect. He's our Nikolai. <laughs> Does the little music play too? The... Dun, 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 dun. Yep. <laughs> Aw, our flying monkey Nikolai. Last week he was um, Dr. I can't remember what we called him. Dr. Dr. Jekyll. Jekyll. Yeah, Dr. Jekyll Nikolai Hyde. Yeah, now he's a flying monkey. <laughs> Poor kid. <laughs> He's I mean, things are always interesting with him. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He likes to keep things fresh. Uh, don't we all? <laughs> so, mm. mm-hmm. um, moving on. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, yeah, Flying Monkey. Zoya tells Tamar that Nikolai's chains are are made with, like, Grisha steel, so she doesn't understand, like, how they could break, and Tamar interrupts her to tell her that the chains weren't broken. They were unlocked. Here's the quote. Zoya stumbled and nearly toppled downstairs, unlocked. Then someone knew Nikolai's secret, had sought to sabotage their work to keep it undiscovered. The implications were overwhelming, end quote. So, yeah, that does bring a whole new element to the game that now someone, like, unlocked him. And note, like, because they've really kept that a secret um, have, and have done a pretty good job of it. So... Anyways, they jump on their horses to go and find the king. And I love this next quote because it's just really cool. 
and here it is. Zoya reached for the invisible currents that flowed around them higher and higher, seeking the disturbance, um, the disruption on the wind that was Nikolai. It was not only the weight and size of him, but the very wrongness of him that brushed against her power. Merzos, abomination, the taint of something monstrous in his blood, end quote. And you know, I love that just because it like shows us more in depth about the magic that she has, like how cool that she could like figure it out because of the current of the wind. And he's just flying somewhere far away. Eric I, likes the magic. I do, of course. So, <laughs> oh, it's just neat. So the monster has been located. Beep, 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 beep. We've located him in <laughs> Balak Karev. And he's headed right into the center of their town square. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Zoya sees him on top of a roof when they get there. So Tamar and Tolia slip into that building. Zoya stays outside so she can kind of like try to watch the perimeter. And she could use her powers to even take him down. But unfortunately, Zoya has the eerie feeling of being watched. Have you ever felt like that, Carrie? That just that <laughs> feeling that someone's that just creepy. watching. <laughs> yes, that eerie that feeling. Really yes, creepy. I have. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So we're gonna continue. Oh <laughs> <laughs> have you ever felt that, Carrie? Have you? Uh, <laughs> the call is Ooh, coming maybe, from inside Maybe the house. a little bit right now. <laughs> that made me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and see, that's all we're friends. <laughs> We can make each other uncomfortable. (laughs) Yeah, possibly. (laughs) So we're going to continue. I'm sorry. I was creepy like the apparat there. (laughs) Yeah, a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so quote is, a shadow broke from the roof, wings spread against the moonlit sky. Zoya lifted her hands and prepared to bring Nikolai down, but he circled once and settled on the towering spike of the church's bell tower. Damn it. Tolia and Tamar would be racing up the stairs of the town hall only to find their quarry escaped. If Zoya attempted the church stairs, Nikolai could well make another leap and be long gone before she reached the top. The sky was already turning gray, and if he broke for open countryside, they might never catch him. There was no time to hesitate. So, they've got a lot going on. Zoya uses her power to fly herself up into the bell tower, which she doesn't really do really gracefully, if you remember, um, which would probably be like me. (laughs) I would smack into the side of the building, probably trying to make myself fly. Um, But she she gets in there, and she sees that, like, I mean, he's there. He's got, like, even, like, the scary monster eye that she can see that are glowing, and his chest is bare, and, like, his trousers are, like, all ripped. Mm. And he's got, like, the talon feet curved. Set in the mood. I know, does <laughs> That's our Nikolai. <laughs> Zoya senses that he is hungry, but there's something a little different this time, and she comes to the conclusion that Nikolai is is really hungry, but she actually is that late night snack, which has never happened before. She is a snack. She is. So she, of course, feels like, <laughs> like hell, you're not going to eat me. Zoya keeps um, Nikolai away, but she does injure her arm in the process, she screams out for Tolia and Tamar, and she really feels like she's about to get like eaten by him. It's gotten really, really, really close. And here's this. Um, here it is in the quote: Zoya could summon lightning, but without both arms to control the current, she knew she would kill him. She raised her arm again. The gust drove the creature back, but its claws gripped the wooden floor, and it plowed forward, wings pinned tight to its body. Dark gaze focused on her. It batted her good arm aside hard enough that she thought it might have broken that bone too. The wind fell away and the monster's wing flared wide. It opened its mouth and spoke. Zoya. She flinched. The monster did not speak. It could not. But it wasn't even the shock of speech coming from the creature's lips that so frightened her. That was not Nikolai's voice. It was soft, cool as glass, familiar. The creature's lips parted, its teeth gleamed. It seized her hair and yanked her head back as she struggled. It was going to tear her throat out. Its lips brushed the skin the skin of her neck, end quote. And just in time, Tamar and Tolia slam through the door and rescue Zoya and get our flying monkey down. So, <laughs> so yes, let's discuss that crazy Eric part. has read on, but Carrie and I have not. So... 
Um, did you get the same sense that I did with the voice? Like, are you coming to um, the same conclusion that I mean, I'm coming to? I mean, I feel like, I mean, I feel like we are. Okay. I mean. So we feel like it's the Darkling's voice. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, I'm, I'm getting some like, he who shall not be named vibes. Mm. Like. The yes. starless like, one. You know. Yeah. Um, I, I say this a lot, but like, energy cannot be created or destroyed. Yeah. So just because it, you know, he whisked into the wind. Yeah, Never. I agree, and I and when I first read this, I felt the same thing. And just because, like, I think it's the line where it says it was soft and cool as glass, and then mm-hmm. familiar. I familiar mean, was the. It's like, and then just her reaction to it. So really familiar. Yeah. So here I'm going to end out this chapter um, with the reading of the end of the chapter. You know what this means, said Tamar. They couldn't control him. The palace was no longer safe, and Nikolai was no longer safe in it. And right now, ambassadors, dignitaries, noblemen, and wealthy merchants were packing their best clothes and preparing to travel to Alzalta to say nothing of the eligible princesses and hopeful noblewoman who accompanied them. We've invited emissaries from every country to witness this horror said tolia to watch nikolai descend into bloodlust to play audience as a king became more monster than man zoya had given her life to the second army to dream that they could build something better she had believed that if her country was strong enough the world might change for her kind now that dream was collapsing Zoya thought of the stories Nina had told them of the prison at the ice court. She thought of the Kergood emerging from the skies to steal Grisha from the safety of their lands. She remembered bodies littering the grounds of the little palace the night the Darklings attacked. She would not let it happen again. She refused. Zoya took a breath and slammed her shoulder back into place, ignoring the jolt of nausea that came with the pain. We find a cure, she said, or Ravka falls. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> in the chapter and by the way i love that last line where she like slams her she like wrote like i mean puts her like shoulder back in place <laughs> and i just spit all over you i'm mm, sorry well, that's what that's we do with there. our guests here <laughs> <laughs> welcome to grisha chaos <laughs> hmm. okay so first of all do we think that the darkling should be sainted um okay so this is coming from <laughs> Is there like an opposite of a saint? Like, is there like a? <laughs> okay. I mean, because I I feel like a lot of people are like, yay, saints! Like, saints are good. Right. It's like there a should positive... be like a like a subcategory. <laughs> we should ask that question after we finish this chapters, because isn't there for like? I don't think There's we just more ta- he talks about it a little bit. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, I think it's interesting after you hear his reason, some reasoning behind it. I don't know if it'll change our minds, but I'm just saying, hey. And then also. I was very confused, and I had to go do some digging as to how much time went from um, Ruin and Rising to King of Scars, because I was like... What's the time I don't, Because we talk about, like, Nina in the orphanage, like, or at Karemzin. Right. And then she's now, what, like, 18, yeah, it, something like her, that? Yeah. And so 20s. there has to be... A pretty big gap, but I went to go look at it, and everyone says there's only three years between. That's impossible. It can't be because you're right. Because I, from what I said, like Lee even said, there was three years between those books, and it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever because they talk about the Civil War, as in like the past, past. Are you sure they didn't mean three years from Crooked Kingdom to this? No, they said that was only one year, from Crooked Kingdom to King of Scars. They said it was one year. Because well, because that can't be too long because of Matthias's body. Like we know that oh, that wasn't right. too long. I forgot our but body it was, bag. I know <laughs> carrying around. God, we still have him. Don't we, we can <laughs> dip Matthias's. <laughs> um, but lugging <laughs> him around. I know. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? I'm fine. Um, but yeah, the when we leave them in the trilogy, they're still young. Hmm. So I was very confused. So I can't find anything else other than three years and that Lee herself said three years. And that cannot be right. It just can't be. Yeah. I refuse. I understand. Yeah. Because, I mean, I think there's some, there might be, I don't know. We'll just have to, if any of our listeners know, (laughs) you can tag us and let us know. I know that when I asked her, I got really excited. I got to ask her a question about um, the Lives of Saints book. And you guys haven't read that 
anyways, I asked her when she when that was supposedly written and like in this time frame, and she said it was a very very old book, mm -hmm. and that had been written like like it was around way before Shadow and Bone and like the stuff, and um, yeah, because that was like kind of like their little yeah, fairy tale kind of book. Wasn't she but, it around? Yeah, she <laughs> has it in Shadow and Bone, mm -hmm. but. If you like read, like I'm, I'm thinking that the version that they published must be a version that they published way after where we are right now. <laughs> like oh. I'm looking, I, I think the version that we have is not the one that Alina was holding on to gotcha, in Shadow yeah. and Bone. It and, was added to. It was like yeah, it had to be. Like I think they added <laughs> different I, versions. Well, because I think isn't that how they kind of did books a long time ago? Like I mean, especially with history, they would like kind of like you saw that in like Game of Thrones. I mean, they had like. Bank, like blank pages that would be filled in later with like great warriors so i can see that yeah i think that's kind of how this book was okay okay so all right well, yeah so i have a thought mm. about the age thing with nina yeah maybe like like usually when you go through some kind of trauma like you can't really remember like the timing yeah so maybe she Maybe she thinks she was a certain, like, age. Maybe. Well, she was part she... of the Karemzin orphans that fled during yeah. the time when they were, because they were too young to do anything. And then we see her training with Jinya and Zoya after the Civil War when she was, like, quote, like, too young or whatever. Like, she was young and silly. Yeah. Well, maybe that was just her attitude. <laughs> well, yeah. She needed some growing up to do. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I was just like, but mm. her being part of like the small children in Crimson is what throws off the timeline. Yeah, it's yeah. what throws me off. All right. Well, and also that, like, I mean, it. So if she's eighteen. Zoya also is what I think. Yeah, she does Zoya teaches her because Zoya didn't. She taught her, right? Like, it I was mean, Jinya she, and Zoya. Yeah, and she Zoya was like, "No, this chick ain't it." <laughs> right. You don't got what it takes, son. No. <laughs> Yeah, she. I'm gonna need you to get some life experience, and then you can reapply. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I need you to be less of a mess. Reapply um, for Grisha. <laughs> but yeah, if she's 18, three years ago she would have been 15. So like that makes sense if she was training with them at 15. But hmm. that to me, like if she was 15 during the Civil War, then like she would have been old enough to do something in this world. But so maybe I'm very she confused. Didn't have like. The knowledge, like, to use her powers? I don't know. I, don't I think know. I'm trying to give her some slack, maybe. Well, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> there is a um, I don't know. I'll have to know. think yeah, about we'll that, and to... I will make sure that we come back to that. We'll have to I think dig. that's a brain cramp. <laughs> it definitely... I know. We could go down, like, such a black <laughs> hole there. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, speaking of Nina, we follow her into Chapter 8. Mm -hmm. Her and Adric are out on a little horse ride. Mm. They're going out of the valley Pulling Matthias behind them. Ah, oh, love that. <laughs> I know. I still think that's so funny to me. I, I know that's horrible. It's, yes. It, I just okay. find it hilarious. It's comical. I got a little Monty Python vibe with the coconuts. Oh, yeah. And yep. like then this uh -huh. body. <laughs> yeah. I can. Trailing yep. behind. I can totally see that. <laughs> Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> okay. I'll okay. be quiet. Sorry. So, no. <laughs> so her and Adric are talking back and forth. A little bit how Leone likes him. A oh. little bit how beautiful Zoya is. And how Adric would have had to live with so much guilt had all the Crimson orphans died during the evacuation. And so I have this quote from here. <laughs> Nina made herself laugh, but she knew all about guilt. She often wondered why she'd survive so much. Captured by the Druskella, shipwreck, Kaz Breckers, Mad Heist, and the ordeal from Perim. She was the only known Grisha to have lived through a dose of the drug. What had made that possible? Was it that particular strain of Jirdaparim? Was it her desire to spite Yal Broom and his witch hunters by surviving? Chance, fortune, fate. She didn't know what to name it. Sometimes it felt like Matthias had kept her in this world through the sheer force of his will. End quote. So, I had to mention Kaz. Oh, yeah. Um... <laughs> I miss my <laughs> so much. Okay. So <laughs> as they're climbing out of the valley, Matthias is still talking to her and like pushing her to let him go. They set up camp and he asks, and Adric asks her how Matthias died. 
of course she has no idea exactly what happened and she yeah. says that that like actually like haunts her after some silence she says she's ready to let go and they head out on the way she asks matthias to tell her a story tell me about your family he responds with tell me about yours <laughs> don't answer a question with a question i know god matthias god so <laughs> annoying and death <laughs> Lord. It's probably like, it's weird if I tell you a story. <laughs> you should tell me one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Out loud so Adric can hear you. It'd be awesome. Um, so she thinks back, and we learn that she was a happy little orphan who greeted all the newbies, took care of the sad ones, and got along with all the adults and ate a lot of cabbage. Oh. She remembers <laughs> when she was seven, she met a little butthead of a boy named Tomic. Yeah. Who terrorized her until she felt so much rage, her powers made themselves clear, as, you know, most right. we should, that happens to them. Um, she made him hiccup for a long what a, time. <laughs> what a cute power. I know. <laughs> I know, she didn't, like, kill him. She just made exactly. him hiccup. She learned after that that she could actually do a lot of things, like soothe a crying infant Ease her tummy aches. Can I please have that gift? And make that little butthead's nose run forever like a waterfall. Still cute. Then the Grisha examiners came in, and she was taken <laughs> off to a little palace. Aw. <laughs> and look where we are now. I know. Back. Little Nina. She's grown up a lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, and she's like... But the... it showed that she was like a sweet little kid. Like she, you know, at the core, she's just well, very right. sweet. Even though she comes across as kind of like crass and um, a lot, she's very like, lovable, definitely. Very sweet. Like she went from like making people have hiccups to raising <laughs> the dead, yes. to throwing bone shards in their exactly. jugular, <laughs> and she's carrying around a corpse. What like, is that? Like a character arc? Like hers yes. is like woo. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. it was like a complete one eighty. Um, so back to the present, she sees the perfect spot to bury Matthias. She dug for hours until she got blisters, and the blisters broke. Adric untied Matthias from the sledge, and Nina wrestled with whether she should look at him one more time. But she decides seeing him bloody and dying was quite enough. Yeah. They literally roll him to the grave and, like, dump him in there to where he just, like, thud. Yikes. <laughs> well, you That's know, a I mean. traumatic. It is traumatic. Like, oh, I can't even you imagine, can... like, being the person that has to witness that. <laughs> She's carried him a long way. She has, so... but he's been on, like, a little sled. I know, but you got to think. Like, I mean, up. she's probably just like, you know what? I promised you I'd bury you in your homeland. Now, here I am. I walked over an entire country, by the way. Got across the sea, walked across. I, I don't know. I just feel like she probably just. <laughs> well, he's big and heavy. So what else could they do? Like she's done. I know. I still like, want to know about this uh, preservation stuff. Yeah. And like if she has all these powers, why couldn't she like make him walk and like lay under the grave? Okay. Moving on. So <laughs> mm. yeah. she put a sprig of ash, red petals from the tulips they placed on him in Ketterdam, <laughs> and a handful of toffees. Then it's time to fill the grave. She asks Adric to go back without her, and she knelt down to have a little private moment with him. She gave him a hero's goodbye, stating all the ways he had helped her and had done great things. In her head, he tells her that she's not done yet. So just listen. She heard the voices again asking to help for her to help them. They actually are drowning out Matthias' voice. And so with that, I have the quote out to the end of the chapter. Nina placed a hand to her heart. Then, as the ache inside her broke, the ice giving way. There was inky, dark water beneath, the terrible pain of knowing he was truly gone, the awful understanding that she would never hear his voice again, because the chorus was real. But Matthias's voice was not. It never had been. You were never here, she whispered, the tears coming hard now. You were never here. All this time, she had wanted to believe he was still with her, but it had been her voice all along, talking herself through the silence, forcing herself to do the work of living when all she wanted was to let go. Goodbye, Matthias. No one answered. She was alone in the silence. The end. 
Hmm. So last week I was wrong. <laughs> what do you mean? I said that I thought that he was really talking to her. Oh. Because, like, I thought, like, with her new powers that, like, it was possible maybe that she was still, like, communicating. I I still think it is possible. Like, I mean, like, I don't. No, literally, she says, Matthias's voice was not real. It was her. But, yeah, I know. (laughs) But still, like, I mean, we hear the other, like, voices. I don't know. Well, yeah, she said those voices are real. And then when she says goodbye and no one answers, it's like, well, I mean, I mean, I'm also just... arguing with the person that's read the whole freaking thing. So, um... <laughs> well, I mean, I... <laughs> no, I mean, like, I'm just this is isn't anything about that. OK, I was just like, I just always hoped it really was him. I guess I just this is the first time I'm rereading this. So I still am just like, oh, it says that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I want to believe that. That I was actually like, I think, more sad than when he actually died. Yeah, that's right. You had like no tears. I didn't. Like time. it didn't affect me like at all. Like everybody always talked about like how devastated they were during that scene and I was like, okay. <laughs> all right. He died. Yeah, I was like I also don't have emotions. Um but Carrie, that was actually way more sad. <laughs> did you think it was sad when Matthias died? Was it a surprise to you? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. It was a surprise because I mean you read it and you're like, okay, we made it. Da da da. Wait, what? Yeah. Like, I don't know. And then there's that whole love, like their love, and it's just like it's just starting to bloom, and there's opposites attract, and. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, to me, like, no shade, absolutely no shade. <laughs> mm-hmm. But to me, that scene was rushed a little bit, in my opinion. So it was like he died. I love you done and moving on like it was so like i don't know to me it wasn't like savored it wasn't like we didn't like go through these whole range of emotions with it so that's probably why it didn't affect me as hard like maybe it's because she knew <laughs> she's gonna <laughs> drag him into the next <laughs> yes we were gonna be, <laughs> we we're gonna be literally dragging it's him cool. around <laughs> it's he's not gone yet we're gonna we're gonna tug him along Get him through a couple of our chapters. Yep. So it really is kind of drawn out. Thud him into the ground. Yeah. But I guess, I mean. But they, they also, all... they, were, they weren't completely done with the heist at that point either when he died. Right. So like they still kind of were like, they were still in Ketterdam. They were, they were still kind of like rushed to get out. So I think that kind of, I mean, I agree. I just found it like, I, I just remember like the first time I read it, I was like, what? Matthias. <laughs> I know. Well, you were also a huge Matthias fan. Well, I love him and Nina's relationship, and I love the arc he does. Like, I just, I think it's really cool that you go from a character that, like, I don't know, I I didn't like him when I was first meeting him. I'm like, oh, my God, a man that wants to kill all the Grisha, and then all of a sudden find, like... No, it, you it, loved him so much. Don't even. Because well, I, he was a big, dumb jock. Well, yes, but... <laughs> At this, I, I'm saying, like, I agree with you. Yes, that is totally right. <laughs> but at the same time, like, I just, like, he does such a huge arc. And anyways, whatever. <laughs> yes. Well, it I was a good was... struggle versus, like, here's what I know. He's a big blonde They're telling guy. me something else. Yeah. I mean, I did name Feared and Mary Kill after him, yes. obviously. Yep. That's where we got Feared. Yep. <laughs> I mean, exactly. And I have to explain that to every single person that ever comes to the show talks about or anything because i love matthias yeah because okay anyways moving forward yeah i'm (laughs) all right so let's get back to nikolai cheers (laughs) in chapter nine everyone is in the war room nikolai is sipping on some coffee trying to get rid of the headache since the um incident yeah needless to say he's not feeling that great about it they're trying to figure out what to tell everyone that's like on their way. He suggests that they actually have a new resource. And I had to include this for humor. As if she could read his thoughts, Zoya's gaze snapped to his, if you say that hideous flagpole of a monk, I will marvel at my ingenuity, plant a fond kiss upon my cheek, put up a plaque to my genius. I will put a plaque on the palace wall commemorating the date as the morning which Nikolai Lansoff took leave of his senses, in quote. <laughs> that was just such a little cute, like, back and it forth is. there. 
so well, Mr. Yuri comes in and complains about his cell. Nikolai responds, the iris suite? My Aunt Ludmilla decorated it herself, overly fond of the color puce, but cell seems a bit ungenerous. Yeah. He's hilarious. So they tell him it's for his own good because he has enemies, blah, blah, blah. Then Yuri realizes that he's in front of the triumvirate and he like fangirls out. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Look who I'm talking to. He's I, like, whoa. Oh, my God. Can I take a selfie with you? Can I get your autograph? Yes. Can I tag you in my Insta? Uh, Which I find that <laughs> I find that so weird, too. Yes, because Cause, of. Because if he's so, like, on the, like, love in the darkling, yes. then, like, I feel like he's also kind of, like, I don't know. No, I can't get it confused with, like, uh, I was almost bordering on, like, being like Matthias. But, no, he's not anti-Grisha. No. He's, like. He's a history guy. Yeah. So I think it's because it's part of the Darkling story. Well, right. Which yeah. we're gonna yeah we'll have to. Well, yeah, we'll get that'll... back into that. Mm-hmm. Um, the best part of that is that Yuri actually upsets Jinya by telling like I don't know by being like all um, weird, and David yeah. actually says, "Excuse me, if you upset my wife again, I will kill you where you stand." <laughs> well, he like calls <laughs> the scars like on her face a blessing. Yeah, and like. Sorry, but like you yeah, weren't and then there. Like, like all the air came out of the room because everybody was like, <gasps> "Exactly." <laughs> I can't believe you said that. Yeah. <laughs> no, you just didn't. Like, <laughs> you better watch yourself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it was so unlike David. But it was really cute, and she's like, "David, oh my goodness!" And he's just kind of like, "Uh huh," and reads his book. <laughs> yeah. Let me get back to my chemistry side. So Yuri tells them what we all know that there was only one Darkling. But then he says that the saints are returning to Ravka and the starless one will be among them. Excuse me? Apparently, there are people who think he didn't die. They think his body died, but as Carrie says before, his spirit still exists. Nikolai asks yeah. him if he thinks all of these incidences that are happening are related to the Darkling, and Yuri points them all out on the map. Which day by day they get closer and closer to where the fold is or was. Right. They're kind of making like this starburst out from like where the darkling died. Mm. Nikolai's a little freaked about this. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really weird to see. Um, but he mentions that since Yuri is trying to get the darkling saint status, he's gonna make whatever he wants out of it. Yuri's like, no, dude. Days ago, there was a cli- there was a sun, like a solar eclipse. In the fold where the Darkling first ruptured the world and created the fold according to the texts. It's also where St. Felix was pierced by the apple boughs. Yeah. Then he says it's where men come to be purified. And everybody's like, what? And he's like, I don't know. Moving on. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Tolly is like, hold on. You're talking about the Obispaya. Obispaya? And I think Nikolai called it, like, the Obis Bumpy. Yeah. Um, Which is, like, apparently a ritual of the burning thorn. When the first Lansoff king... This is interesting. Yes. So with the first Lansoff king, there was a group of monks that offered to fight alongside him. But these monks could change their shape into creatures like wolves and dragons and things like that. When it was time for them to return to the human form, they couldn't. They were stuck as these creatures. They used a dangerous ritual called Obus Bumpy, and some survived into, like, they they became men again. Right. In a version of the story where the first priest guards were Grisha, those animals became the first amplifiers. Yes. So <laughs> there's a lot in there. There is. There, like, it's, it's really weird because it's also just like, it, it's kind of like when you read the book, of, like the story <laughs> of the saints, like they're all like, it's just kind of myth. You don't really know what to take from that. That could be true and what's not. And like, and I there's think that's different a version. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I mean, and I love that. Yeah. You don't know what's true, what's not. Uh, nope. <laughs> Nikolai, of course, is hella interested in this beast purging thing. Uh, but nobody actually knows about the ritual. Of course, he'd be interested in getting. Well, yeah, he's got a thing. beast inside yeah. him. Ooh, bust it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he sends Yuri back to the Iris suite with the hopes he'll return to his people <laughs> and maybe get his books. His what? His books. Oh, okay. Books. 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 Um, when he leaves, they talk about how it's scary that there are many, many people like him that are drawn to the Darkling's power. Tol- yeah. <laughs> Although I kind of am too. Tolia says the priest are. guard who served the crown, and when he was younger, he actually wanted to be one so bad. Tamar says they wouldn't let women join, so they decided a group that wouldn't allow a fighter like her just wasn't for them. Sorry. I didn't mean to, like, do that so loud. I, like, gasped, <laughs> like, audibly. Um, I was like, yes. Wow. I'm sorry, but wait. Wasn't... And, oh, God, I hate to do this. When we were just talking about those, um, the creatures, they, they, like, turned into the creatures and then couldn't turn back. Uh-huh. Didn't it say somewhere in there, like, something about these were the first, like, priest guard people? Yes. Okay. Yes. That was my audible gasp because I just was thinking about that. Yes, in my head. with the first Lanceoff King. Yeah. They were the priest guards. And then there was, a, there was another version of the story where that first priest guard grouping were actually Grisha. Yeah. And it, there's something in there that says Apparat or something. Isn't there something weird? No. Yeah, it was like, that's where, like, the first Apparat was, Came like, from. named. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. It wasn't, like, a big, huge thing, so I didn't put it in there, but I guess I probably should have. No, you shouldn't have. It was just me being, like, crazy, just because, like, <laughs> I I reread that this time, and I was like, what? I don't remember that. It just, it has nothing to do with anything. Oh, don't worry. Is. It's just me. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm totally not worried about Love it. Love you. Go ahead. <laughs> So they start looking at the path that, like, he's taking. Like, when the creature comes, they start looking at, like, the path that Nikolai, like, takes as the creature. And they realize that he's starting to head towards the fold each time. And that these miracles actually started once the creature, quote, woke inside him. Yeah. He decides he's going on a fun little pilgrimage to figure out this Obi Bumpy with Yuri. Um, but he's going to disguise Yuri so that nobody thinks that he's, like, supporting this guy. (laughs) Yeah. Nikolai says something about, even without an heir, there may be a way to keep the throne safe and make sure the country isn't vulnerable, though he doesn't share what. Kind of a Kaz moment there. (laughs) We're like, I have a plan, but I'm not going to tell you. Not yet. And so with that, I'm going to quote it to the end. Mm. He felt the monster recoil. Action, decision. In moments like these, he felt almost like his old self. If this thing wanted to claim his soul, Nikolai intended to give it a damn fight. And that battle began here, now, with the refusal to relinquish any bit of his spirit to the terror trying to drag him into the dark. He would do what he always had done. He would charge forward and pray that hope might be waiting like the roots of the thorn would, just out of sight. End quote in chapter. Yas, queen. Yas. So that was a lot, um, but there was so much good information in there. Yes. Okay. And I tried to condense it down to make it a little easier. Hope Girl, that everybody. I am very proud <laughs> of you. Along. You really did a great job. <laughs> Thank you. And there I am. I'm like, hey, wait a minute, go back. <laughs> and did you forget that? Yeah. So um, let's bring back that question about. The Darkling. So, like, there's one thing. Um, yeah. What do we think? Do we think Let's that... Let's talk Darkling. <laughs> yeah. Should he... So, I don't know where it was, but somewhere in what we were reading, Yuri says that, like, I mean, his, his like, quote is, like, I mean, it's a, he talks about darkness is the only place where you can be equal. A rich man yeah. and, like, a pauper can be the same. And, like, that's kind of scarily true. Like that quote, and I just found that like kind of like I was like, I don't know. It kind of made me realize, okay, I could kind of, s- not that I'd be on like going. For- I could see how they're like kind of getting there. Like, yes. Well, the okay. saints are those who performed miracles, right? Like, it's not like they all did grand, positive, like hero things, right? It's just that they performed certain miracles, right? I mean, it's kind of like up in the air. I mean, because you have to like it's a lot of it is legend a lot of it is myth Mm -hmm. i mean but then like we read like i mean we know that alina becomes 
a saint. Well, and she I mean, saved everyone. And we know her whole story. Yeah. So, I mean, but they always talk about these other saints. So, I mean, Carrie, what do you think? I don't know. Darkling talk. <laughs> do you think the Darkling should be a saint? I mean, what did he do that, like, see, that's the thing. Like, what did he do that was, like, great and grand? Well, I mean, I, mean, I guess it depends on your definition of great. Like, yeah, I mean, really big bad things are, you know, like, great. <laughs> Not yes. great and, like, woo, <laughs> yay, but, like, great, like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Like, bigly. Um. Like, whoa, nobody's ever done that before. Mm-hmm. Um, like, he was the only one, like, with that power who was this, like, almost immortal being who, like, changed the course of history. And Don't forget about I his mean, mama. He, I mean, I feel like Did you, yeah. some of the things he was oh, mm-hmm. yeah. doing in the beginning were okay. Well, yeah, because he was all like, like, I mean, I think he looked like that from the outside, definitely. And everybody had, like, I mean, they talk about it, like the Grisha all had an attraction towards him, and like it was something that they even spoke about how, like, it was part of his power that everybody was like wanting mm-hmm. to like be part of him. And he's got like, I don't know, I just I find it interesting because it's just he didn't. I don't, he didn't do anything good. He, like, killed a lot of Grisha. Like, my God, he got, like, mad. And then, like, he was trying to expand the fold, which was, like, darkness with Volcra. I mm-hmm. mean, expanding the fold isn't doing anybody good. I mean. I feel it, like this is an example of, like, why living forever is not a good idea. Yes. Like, eventually you're, like. <laughs> you get bored. And okay. You're, like, I'm going to create just, some havoc. <laughs> yeah. You're, like, this isn't fun anymore. <laughs> Uh, what if I did this? <laughs> you know, uh, I read some of these books and they're like, they're 700 years old. And I'm like, geez. Boring. <laughs> yeah. What? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I can't even. Hmm. There was actually a character in um, Anne Rice's interview with the vampire. Her name was Estelle. She didn't live very long. She was in the uh, catacombs in France. Mm-hmm. And she, her bit one big line of the whole thing was um, that like eternity was the only thing that vampires should fe- should should fear. Mm. Oh, I meant to ask you, and you just brought up Anne Rice. And this is completely <laughs> off topic, but I won't remember it if I don't <laughs> ask you now. Okay. Did you ever read? I guess like Anne Rice wrote a Sleeping Beauty, like trilogy. Uh huh. Okay, that's all I needed. Yep, <laughs> I know what you're laughing about because I didn't know that at first. Um. They're really good. Yeah. <laughs> I read but them when I was. But it's definitely a genre that, I mean, I, read I didn't when know I what was... I was reading. <laughs> when I was in high school, when I was like a freshman, I came across them. Wow. And I'm the age that I am, which I won't say because the lady never tells. But still, I like read it just a couple months ago, starting it because I was like, oh my God, I love Sleeping Beauty. Oh, yeah, no. Anne Rice wrote it. That's going to be cool. Yeah. And I was like in bed uh-uh. reading at night and I was like, oh my God. What? Whoa. Yeah. Um, oh, baby. This is not... What? <laughs> Dang. Yeah. I can't believe this... you read it without knowing. Oh, my goodness. I had no clue. I'm a terrible not... friend for not sharing that with you sooner. <laughs> well, see, and that's what I thought. I was like, what well, Terry knows <laughs> and Rice... No, no, not that you're Terry bad. Terry likes this book. <laughs> I was just like... <laughs> oh. <sighs> well... He's, in, he's like sweating. <laughs> all of you... Whoa. I'm not recommending this for anybody to read. Um, Especially under the age of 18. Yes. Just, I mean, <laughs> to each their own, that was a surprise. If you are the opposite of a prude and over the age of 18, then go for it. That's... Don't I'm listen saying... to Terry reading it in her freshman year in high school. <laughs> right. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Um, without getting too into it, I was raised very differently than mm-hmm. everybody else, and that's as far as I'll go with that. <laughs> yeah, you were. <laughs> My story with that or not for um not for podcast years no they're not <laughs> so we had a few friends that were yeah we did brought up a little differently than yeah. your average yeah not like this southern <laughs> southern child <laughs> not like this. we all were unique. and they all migrated together <laughs> yes yeah we all found each other <laughs> yes like, we did it's like you could walk into the cafeteria and you were like those are my people <laughs> 
exactly. there's that table. <laughs> and I'm like, mm. I'm telling Caden, like, because he's getting ready for high school next year, that, like, that's important years because he gets to find his tribe. And, like, I keep thinking back on, like, you know, it's just, it is really cool when you get to find your people. Well, I mean, so I have this experience a lot where I am still friends with a lot of my high school friends. And people are like, I don't talk to anybody that I went to high school with. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I mean. I, I don't really know. either. I mean, yeah. like, I, you know, you guys. Yeah. And then I got a couple over on the side. <laughs> like, <laughs> Some friends on the A side. couple over on the other side. Hey, yeah. Gary. Of <laughs> Gary. course, Gary's out there. He's our friend. Gary, Terry, and Gary. Oh, wow. Yep. Okay, so, so yep. just a and little Sally. backstory. So, um, we were all in high school together. Yes. Um, we also did marching band together. <laughs> yeah. And um, way to ruin my image. Game. I know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm tarnishing. <laughs> yeah. I'm no. Bringing your cool factor down. No, I always got in trouble. So, um, but <laughs> but it was there was the two of us, and then there was also a gentleman named Larry. And so <laughs> when the band director would tell us, tell one of us. All we heard is Ari. Yep. And <laughs> take a step left. And like all three of us were like, bloop. Which one? Anyway. <laughs> it was a little easier for me because he didn't tell me what to do since right. I was in guard. So yeah. I didn't. Unless he was telling me not to hit somebody, which I did often. I mean <laughs> I mean if I if I had had a flag, I probably would have wept some people. <laughs> See, Poor David. If David ever <laughs> listens to this. I wish I would I'm kinda did not he get sorry. A lot? <laughs> I'm kind of not sorry. <laughs> it was, okay, quick, very quickly, it was raining. Remember we had the stages that mm-hmm. one year? Oh, yeah. It was raining. It was during competition. Mm-hmm. He was going backwards, mm-hmm. and he slipped, and his butt, mm-hmm. like, sat on my stage right when I was doing this, like, big sweep, and I hit him upside the oh. head so hard that the pole went ding. <laughs> and- <laughs> Dang. <laughs> and I just kept on going, and then I literally kicked him off the stage, and I was like, move, <laughs> in the middle of the competition. And I'm not sorry. <laughs> wow. Um, you're not in uni- like you're not in uniform. You're I'm not, like, get off on. my stage. <laughs> this is my space. It was. You're in my way. You're gonna ruin my score because we got scored separately. Right. You're gonna ruin my score. <laughs> sorry, go on. That's wow. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little, a little backstory. Yeah. Hey, history is important. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I Whew. just I don't remember much about it because I read. I never went to like band camp because I was at my own. I so they always threw me up front. I, like, oh which, yeah, you were in the pit. Yeah, because I mean, like I normally <laughs> played saxophone, but then during the summer, during marching band, I played triangle. <laughs> and they tried to give me all these other things to do, and like I think it's hilarious because I didn't know how to play any of those, and like. I sit. I literally remember like <laughs> pretending, like just hitting the xylophone, like thing, and like they just never put the like microphone near me. I like, mean, they just always knew they wanted me to just like look like I knew what I was doing. You and participated. I, yeah. I mean, I think I was told at some point my freshman year, like, look, if you're not confident with it, just pretend. Just yeah, go move through the, the motions. <laughs> I pretend, and I did that a lot. We I also was like what. Remember yeah. um, Mr. Gregory putting people in slings when they couldn't do what they're supposed to do? <laughs> and then you go to band competitions and you see all the people in okay. the crutches on the sideline? I didn't. Mm. You don't remember that? No. Never like, happened to him. But I mean, well, like, I no, wasn't. Especially a- in the guard. If, like, somebody didn't know what they were doing, we put a sling on them. So they were, like, out there, but they didn't, like, mess us up. <laughs> the only reason I was a part of marching band and band was because it got me out of P.E. It so did. And that is the okay. only reason. I had to go to PE. You somebody Why? lied to you. <laughs> yeah. You didn't have to do that, girl. You were exempt. You were in marching band. But I will say, so there was a little group of us that were in the band. And when it came time to the sports. Um, the sports. The, uh, <laughs> we'll call our it PE, sports. Our PE instructor was like, um, if you guys want to just walk, walk the track, go for it. <laughs> We, like, got to do our own thing. Wow. Because he was like, I don't know what to do with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're the band kids. I was yeah. like, I can't, play, I can't play basketball because I might get hurt. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And eighth, well, no, I won't. It, no. <laughs> I'm, like, totally off subject. Hey. 
That's what we do on here all the time. All the time. And but I just bef- spilled tea all over myself. Before we forget. We spilled the tea and I spilled the tea. Talking about tea, it is that time for... Grisha Cast News! News! Whoop, whoop. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, we enjoy doing that every week. We don't have a lot, nope. but I did want to point out this one thing because, it, you know, I'm a freak and it excites me. They did finally put out information about the pre-order gifts that you got if you got one of the books last week. Ooh, I'm paying attention. Yeah, but so you you didn't have to worry about it. You didn't have to do anything. But since oh. I didn't get a book last week, I um was able to use my pre-order of Rule of wolves that i got from amazon right when it went um i sent it and i w- there showed us what are like the little gifts are and it's a cute little pin and this really pretty art print that i wanted to bring up to both of you but like at the same time i didn't know if you wanted to see it because like i mean some of it you probably won't understand um because you haven't <laughs> finished King oh, good. Of scars <laughs> but totally above our head. it is really cool <laughs> it's it shows like i just didn't want to give anything away and okay. i don't think uh, it would but i liked it well i'm um, glad i didn't see it yet yeah but the pin's really cute and then the like little piece of the the art is really cool and yeah that's it i mean besides the fact that i mean we all know the really exciting day i mean april 23rd is now like another birthday for me it's gonna be a holiday it is it's a red day mm-hmm. grisha day grisha holiday the new bank holiday mm-hmm Mm-hmm. I get off a- from work. <laughs> You're like, oh no, I'm not coming in today. Sorry. And we'll have and we'll have to give everybody news about how we're going to handle that. Yeah, closer to time. Yes, and we are working on that. And I, I think we've come up with a good idea. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I just, yeah. Terry has to like weed out all of, like late night crazy <laughs> conversations that all of a sudden, like when I get like in the, a mood of like coming up with ideas i'm like okay we're gonna do this and this and this and i'm gonna come out with all of it and i come up with like <laughs> one idea that actually is usable so terry's had to filter through all that like colander of like trying to get all that excess water out you know yeah but that's how we work yes so anyways we've got a good idea we'll talk to you guys about it soon we'll um, ask carrie Uh-oh. yeah <laughs> I'm going to be a- like, it sounds great. Let's do it all. <laughs> <laughs> I want, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay, so we have a listener thank you. <laughs> and it's from Instagram. And it is a wonderful person that, um, their, I guess their screen name is The Crow Club. And then also Kaz Holds My Heart. Same. Yay. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank for your, you. We're so glad you're listening. And yeah, keep on listening. We're we love it. <laughs> well, we love our listeners. We do. We do. And I do have like, I mean, we have things that we have to do. We're, we're trying to like give away a phone case, and I keep on forgetting it every like. <laughs> yeah, that phone case has been sitting right there for a long we'll time. We'll do it next week. Yeah, we say that every week. <laughs> but hey, we'll get there. We will. Okay, so we need to end, but. Carrie, thank you so much for coming. This was awesome, and you have to do it again. And yeah. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. You did great. It's fantastic, and you don't have to, like. I mean, you can, we talk about whatever on here, yes. obviously. So I mean, uh-huh. yeah, just don't take this thing seriously at all. Okay. And you're perfect for Greek cast. <laughs> so, um. Next week in the chapters we're going to cover will be 10 through 12, which is kind of like the same amount that we had this week. And yeah. So, okay. Well, it's been great. You guys have a great week. We'll see you all later. Bye. 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 Like we're at the end of the hour, so my voice is a little husky. A plus. No No mourners. No funerals. This has been GrishaCast. Connect with us on the web at GrishaCast.com. Send an email to info at GrishaCast.com. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook at GrishaCast. 